Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. The experience of this program is going to be interpretation enough, but we are going to try to tell the story of this unit along this march. On the morning of July the 1st, 150 years ago, slightly over 1,800 soldiers from Wisconsin, Michigan, and Indiana marched up this road, the Emmitsburg Road. This was one of the finest brigades in the Army, and at the end of this day, that brigade would never exist again. Now, the Iron Brigade didn't get that name at the beginning of the war. They were called the Black Hat Brigade within the Army because everybody in the brigade wore the hardy hat. It was at the Battle of South Mountain, this brigade fought in Turner's Gap. While they were fighting there, they were in full view of the commander of the Union Army, George McClellan. And the legend is McClellan said to someone, they fight like they're made of iron. What makes a crack unit? It's leadership and it's the soldiers in the ranks who never want to let one another down, even though they know the dangers that they face. The real focus of this program is who were the men of the Iron Brigade? What was the price that they paid? And why do we remember them? In the 2nd Wisconsin, one of the sergeants was Cornelius Wheeler. And Corny, as his friends called him, was reckoned, as one man said, a noble, honorable soldier. When the war came, Peck volunteered for service as the color sergeant. Dawes never said this because he was a very modest man, but when you read his memoirs, there's one characteristic of Dawes. He never asked his men to do what he wouldn't do. Private Reed continues by noting, one ball carried away my cap box and a glance on my belt. It produced a sensation in my abdominal regions very much like the kick of a mule, and I was uncertain for a moment whether I was summoned to the courts of five or only a little frightened. By the left flank, double quick, charge! The regiment would swing in the line of battle from their column of fours and push off into destiny. The brigade took 1,883 men into the fighting the morning of July the 1st. By sundown, 691 men were left to answer. The Iron Brigade had the highest number of men killed and then the highest number of total casualties of any unit in the entire Army of the Potomac in the battle. Men of the Iron Brigade didn't want to go into legend here. They wanted to live. They wanted to survive the war and go home. Ultimately, what they did was they sacrificed themselves for their comrades, for the army, for the country on this day.